Chapter 8. Case 1. It's all good asterisk near death experience I any call first excerpt. In my NDE I came to understand that most of us have lived much, much longer than we could even fathom. That our lives which feel so very long are infinitesimal when placed in the whole picture. Which for that matter, cannot even be framed. I was shown how every single individual through their own free will chooses paths that mathematically take them to the circumstances of their next existence or life, that nothing at all sits in accident or chaos, that every single aspect of our lives are ruled by natural laws that we placed ourselves in, that in a sense, we create our own worlds. I was shown how one can never assume either, that if someone lives a life of suffering that this is because of evil deeds. Many may choose a life of suffering because of what it awakens in them. Or to help another, etc. We can never ever assume that we can be accurate in guessing why each being lives the life they live. I cannot describe the relief, the refreshing, peaceful balm this knowledge was for me. To finally gather this truth that I'd yearned for all of my life, that all is good, that there is sense and beauty all around, that no one is just free falling, as it had seemed before, that God doesn't just get to toy with us as he pleases with random ideas of tests, including rewards and punishments that just depend upon his current mood or mindset. While in this experience, out in the vast expanse of stars and planets, moons, and knowledge, I knew complete trust for what felt like the first time. This was bliss for me. I had lived in fear and distrust and panic for 30 years. My guide stood by at a certain time. And he lovingly stayed as my support while I had a kind of life review. I never felt chastised at all, even though I know I've been very cruel at times and have hurt many people. I've lost my temper in horrible ways and I have had great trouble with forgiveness, and yet, I felt only love and understanding through the entire life review. What it felt like was that I was being given the opportunity and the gift of being able to stand back and more fully understand and love myself. I was able to feel exactly what others around me had felt during my life. I understood how everything I did and said and even thought had touched others around me in one way or another. I was able to even enter the minds and emotional centers of many who had been around me, and understand where they were coming from in their own thinking, how their own personal views and life experiences had brought them to the places where they stood. I felt their struggling and their fears, their desperate need for love and approval, and more than anything, I could feel how childlike everyone was. With every person I viewed, including myself, I was able to see and feel with a higher mind and eye. And the feeling I had toward everyone was nothing less than what a loving mother would feel for her children at toddler age. It was actually comical at times. I could feel how the elders, as I will call them those who are helpers on the other side, who have mastered themselves in many or all ways, and help work with us, see us and find so much humor in the way we do things. It might seem brutally annoying to consider when we are in the midst of a great argument or drama that is playing out in our lives that the elders view these things very much like when a mother sees her two-year-old scream and cry and bop another child on the head with a stuffed animal. The mother doesn't want her child to fall apart and become hysterical and cry. She feels for her child, but at the same time, she sees a little bit of comedy in how seriously the child takes what is usually a trivial drama. She continues to love her child and thinks the world of it, hoping it will go on enjoying the day, living and learning. This was a big light bulb moment for me, because I had entertained the dark idea, during my life, that every little less than perfect action of mine, was being watched, by God, and judged with anger or great sadness. I felt constant guilt for my mistakes and bellabod over the dread of being watched with severe or at least very stern eyes. I wanted to please, and I believed that I was so often falling short. This had been a maddening way to live. So getting the chance to view others from a much higher frequency was wonderful, to say the least. And knowing how much love I felt as I watched or sensed others in their personal situations, made me want to live more in joy rather than guilt and worry. No one was mad at me. I was able to explore the mind or energetic pattern of one of my life's sworn enemies, someone I couldn't imagine forgiving for what I'd witnessed. And yet, coming back from my NDE, I could feel nothing more than such a flood of love for this woman that I dived in at the chance to write her a letter and tell her how much I loved her, and to ask for forgiveness for the energetic weight I might have held over her from my own dark thoughts and anger. She could have been my own firstborn. That is how much I adored her at that time. 
because i was able to feel the divine love for her that god feels toward her i too couldn't help but love her in a similar way it was such a surprisingly marvelous feeling to relinquish the burden of my own anger and judgments much of which i hadn't even carried consciously most of my years surveying all of this i want to note that i felt a higher part of me that had compassion for the me that was so ignorant and juvenile it seemed to understand what i was working with in every detail and it only wanted for my joy i felt that toward my own self if that makes any sense i desired to have my lower self awaken and to be filled with love and joy i wanted for my lower childlike self to be kinder to be more conscious and to find peace i am forever grateful for my life review and what i took from it i came back with this knowing that despite what seemed good or bad before it now became united to be only good because i trusted and knew that everything was in its right place even when people made decisions that i didn't agree with i still felt that in the overall picture it was all good i had this knowing as well that there was the essence or spark of the highest as i'll refer to god in everything in every mineral vegetable animal human and beyond i just knew that the highest waited within everything to expand and create and grow in experience i lost all desire to analyze everything in life as i'd done before through religious examples by trying to judge every little thing as being either good or bad i wasn't concerned we are all just consciousness experiencing life and learning how to love create and develop to the highest we can be I knew to choose what felt right for me and to trust more. That when something felt unjust or imbalanced, to do what I could to work toward harmony, but to not worry about that which I had no control over. I know that eventually, even without our taking over the controls, the universe is so full of order, it always finds a way to balance everything, because the universe cannot exist without perfect balance. And it will continue to exist. Second excerpt. Everything was miraculous. Everything was so miraculous. Every moment. Every breath that's happening. Every connection we make personally is just the most beautiful, miraculous thing. If we could see what was really going on behind all of this and how much is involved in each one of us and how beautiful it really is the bigger picture, we would really just be in awe all the time. I can see why maybe we need not to be in this state all the time because I couldn't even function. I was going from laughing to crying and things like that. People could have legitimately said she needs to be locked up and I would probably have understood. Case 2. One of God's most astonishing gifts near death experience Dr. Mary Neal, MD. Excerpted from 7 Lessons from Heaven: How Dying Taught Me to Live a Joy-Filled Life During the Review of My Life, Jesus repeatedly allowed me to see both the immediate and distant effects of an event. I was able to appreciate and understand how each event spread through time and space, initiating a cascade of other events from which something of beauty and worth always emerged. One of God's most astonishing gifts is his ability to use time to heal and redeem, to make something beautiful later out of something that appears ugly now. Does God really work all things together for our good? During my life review, as I witnessed beauty emerging from every event, my faith in God's promise shifted from a somewhat vague theological hope into complete trust. I understood that he genuinely does make everything beautiful in his time. Case 3. All experiences are essential I and DS experience number 1 I was then led to a room that resembled a conservatory. As soon as I was left alone the walls came to life. 360 degrees of movies all projected at once i watched the domino effect of what harsh and unkind words and actions would do to people how it would start with one person and spiral down to 300 people i felt the anger and sadness of everyone i thought i was going to explode i was emotionally shaken to the core that was the only semi negative thing that happened to me during my visit there I was asked to return to the library as I was to start my studies as in reading the scrolls it was more like downloading into my consciousness I read and studied there for 60 years most were people's lives from beginning to end I was allowed to feel the emotions of most people some were vibrant some were sort of boring a lot that was downloaded was information this will be hard to explain but I'll do my best we here on earth have a role to play We choose our lives even before we are born whether we chose a good life or a bad one 
it matters not because there is no good or bad it's just your chosen role and all lives lived are essential for our evolution and development that's why we have memory we learn and grow because we have different lifestyles beliefs opinions etc sorry to say this but even the most evil death destruction disease is essential think about it if everything was always good and going your way if all relationships were good and everyone got what they wanted over the years it would get pretty boring and stagnant i know it sounds wonderful but it wouldn't let us grow much would it also something else that might be hard to comprehend is that there is no such thing as time your life is happening all at once meaning your past present future are all one bubble it's our brain filter that makes this so called time linear ha huh. i know strange that might raise questions of free will do we have it yes and no just because your life is predetermined you don't know what the outcome will be things can change on a dime always remember that i knew everything about the universe why how what's the point of it all i was there for so long it was hard not to know everything when i returned i couldn't remember a lot of information that i had received i assumed it was intentional soulmate this is a part of zindagi ki roshni consultancy it has been established for those who have lost someone and for those who are very sad in their life about 100 pdf books and 20 short audio books of this topic will be sent to those who join it this data will be sent to their email or whatsapp if you want to join this organization then please send whatsapp message to this number 9780242